road she traveled. And her women who made a difference. A cool kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview with Rachel Gunderson, conducted on April 28, 2006, by Parker. Part 2. Could you start out by telling us a little bit about Carol Gunderson? Well, she was born in 1902. How old would she be if she were alive today? 104 years old? 104 years old, right. So I'm glad she's not alive. <laughs> She'd be a Mrs. Methuselah, I think. Anyway, um, she was born in Illinois, but must have moved to the, to the Buffalo, New York area as a pretty young uh, girl. And I don't know lots about her. She went to like a prep school, not a public school, but a private kind of girl school, I think. And then from there, as I told you before, she went to, to Wellesley College and distinguished herself academically. I think she was a history major, I understand. So she liked history too. And, and of course was interested in government even then because she was president of the student council at Wellesley. Then she moved to New York City briefly uh, at age 22, I suppose you are, when you finish college, and worked as a social worker there. And exactly what she did, I don't know. But there she met Uncle Alf. Gunderson, her husband. Her, she was from an Irish family. Her name was Carol McCarty, um, totally Irish. And he was totally Norwegian family. So it was kind of an interesting mixture. And they got married after a fairly short, maybe a year or so. He was finishing his medical training out in, in New York when he met her. And exactly how they met, I don't remember. I didn't hear that romantic story. But she moved back to Lacrosse at about, or moved to Lacrosse at a fairly young age, I think about 27. Had four kids, fairly close together. Uh, one of them died as a baby of something probably called sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS. You maybe heard of that. Nobody knows why the babies appear healthy, but they suddenly die. So anyway, she has three living um, children. One of them is Dr. Eric Gunderson, who ran the Heart Institute at Gunderson Lutheran, a famous heart doctor. Um, the other two are, are women who both went to Wellesley College to where she went. So, and, and they've been active her daughter Signa in the community. Um, in La Crosse, her first years here, she got active on the board of the YWCA, uh, I think of the Red Cross, some other things, Girl Scouts as her daughters got older in the community. And being a doctor's wife, and I'm a doctor's wife too, my husband was a pediatrician, um, you're busy doing social things for your husband, having parties and meeting people and going to events. So she was busy doing that, but then she also kept busy in the community. According to her story, uh, she and her husband went to visit in Norway in 1939. Now, that was just at the time that Hitler was starting to plow through Europe at the beginning of World War II. And she visited in Norway, because there are lots of relatives still in Norway, Gunderson relatives. And she realized, as all of this was going on in Europe, that she didn't know much about American history and politics. Mm -hmm. So she came back and said, what can I do? I can't go back to school at this point. Uh, so she found the League of Women Voters and joined the League of Women Voters. Uh, you'll be able to read some more about it, but but the League is still active in La Crosse today. Its goal is to provide information to voters, to get people to vote. And uh, so she became active in that, and that's where she was a, a great shining light, including being a vice president of the National Board, um, running that fundraising campaign, 11 million bucks. Uh, and, and and getting lots of other women, stimulating other women 
to join the league and to be active in their communities. What would you say her greatest accomplishment during her lifetime was? I think not a specific thing that she did because she did so many things. But I think from my point of view, the greatest thing was that she was a role model for so many young women who needed that kind of role model. I don't know if you're aware, but after a world... <laughs> Lots of men went off, including Aunt Carol's husband, who went off to the service. Um, and, and women had to take lots of men's roles. So there, were, there was somebody called Rosie the Riveter who helped put together airplanes. And I mean, they worked in factories. They did all kinds of things. When all the guys came back from the war, they had to shoo the women back into the home so that there were jobs for the guys. And so women were very much encouraged to be wives and mothers and not have, have a job outside the home. I mean, now, how many of your mothers work? Yeah, practically all do. When, when my kids got older, I went back to school and I worked because I loved it. I just thought it was lots of fun to work. Uh, but And lots of women have to work now just to make ends meet. But that wasn't true then. Many, many, many women uh, stayed home and raised kids and families were bigger. How many kids in your family? Um, three. Three? Four. Four, okay. Three. Right. Okay. Lots of families are one or two kids now, and mm -hmm. they're very small families. So that there's more room for women to work now, too. But we needed, at that point, because we were wives and mothers and not working or not going back to school, we needed a role model, somebody who, who said to us, not in so many words, but by what she did, by her actions, that it's okay. To, to go out there and have thoughts for yourself and, and to work for things. Oh, we worked, the league worked really hard for lots of years to help make better schools in La Crosse. We moved back to La Crosse in 1965 after having been gone quite a while. The schools were terrible here. They were just awful. The textbooks were 15 years old and things like science. Uh, I mean, our oldest son started high school and the science textbook textbook said, someday we may land a man on the moon. Well, at that point, we were landing a man on the moon. You know, it was, it, it, they were so far behind. So she did things like that, and the fact that she was the role model that stimulated lots of women to go and do things has helped make La Crosse a better place, I think. Okay, um, so how has uh, Miss Gunderson affected our lives? Um, I think the things that she did in the community uh, for education, to promote education. Once upon a time, the school board was not elected. It was appointed by the mayor. The mayor had tremendous power. If he was a very conservative man, he appointed conservative people, and mostly all men at that point. Um, so that the League of Women Voters and Aunt Carol worked very hard to have an elected school board, which happened at about, the, about 1960, I think, finally. Uh, well, maybe, maybe a little bit later. Then also, the school board couldn't set its own budget. It, um, it had to be approved by the city council. And so they would just say, okay, we're going to cut a couple million bucks this year to heck with what it means for education. Uh, so that the league and I worked hard on that too once I moved back uh, to be able to have the school board be what we call fiscally independent where it could set its own budget. And then if people didn't like it, they'd, they'd vote out the school board members. But that's the way it should be, not to have the, the La Crosse Council vote on it. So she, she worked very hard for education, and I think we are still feeling the positive effects of that. Uh, there was a superintendent by the name of Dick Swantz who came in and did a superb job of hanging in and slowly making the school district better. Um, and, and, uh, but it was, it was groundwork of people like Aunt Carol. 
And then the other thing was to be the role model for women, to, to encourage women to participate. Because when you have only half of the citizens of a city doing things publicly to make the city a better place, that's only using part of the, the, the volunteer services of people. Whereas when you have everybody, and you know that any team you've ever been on, any project you've ever worked on, when everybody's working, boys and girls, um, much more gets done, mm -hmm. right? So that was one of the things she did too. What did you um, admire her most for? I think what I said before that she was she was like a superwoman. She could do all those things, and I too still. It's important to me to to do a good job of cooking. It was very important to me to raise my sons, all five of my sons. I'm very proud of them. They, they've done great things. They are doing great things. Uh, so that she did all of that plus all that volunteer stuff. You have to have a lot of energy to do that, I think. I'm old now and I take naps regularly, but, but I did lots of things too. I'm on the Logan Wall of Fame for Helen's sake. <laughs> Do you think you could tell us a specific story or memory about you and her? No, nothing that kind of sticks out in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do remember when she and her husband celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. And her husband was, um, oh, I don't want to say anything negative. But he liked to talk, and he liked to talk about how great he was. And he was a great urologist. Uh, uh, and he had good reason to be proud of himself. But at their wedding anniversary, he got up. And, and in the Gunderson family, giving speeches at a party is a big part of things. And then you say skull, which means, you know, congratulations kinds of things. Or cheers, you know, you'd say. But in Norwegian, you say skull. So he got up and he was talking mostly about himself. And his daughter and I both thought, hey, it's their anniversary. It's not his birthday party. You know, he ought to be talking about the two of them, talk about his wife too. So when he sat down, then both his daughter and I, Signa, got up and said something about Aunt Carol. And, and then, you know, and said something about the both of us. And then she got up and thanked us very much. So, uh, you know, I felt good about that, that I was kind of paying her back mm -hmm. for uh, to, to say publicly some really neat things about her. Because that's kind of the sad thing is when people die, they don't hear all those neat things everybody says about them at their funeral, right? So it's good if they hear that before they die. That was also a sad thing about her. She lived until she was 87 years old. That's pretty old. But the last years of her life, maybe 10 years, maybe not quite that long, but have you heard of Alzheimer's disease? Mm -hmm. Well, she had something, I don't think it was actually Alzheimer's, but it was kind of like Alzheimer's, where slowly this super bright woman um, started to lose her memory and her ability to communicate. And that was so sad, very sad. So, but, and she had remained healthy for a long time. But to see that brilliant mind just go, shh, that was very sad. So, so anyway, but lots of good memories of her. And, and I'm still a very good friend with, with her daughter, Signa who's a couple of years older than I am. And her, her son, Eric, uh, my husband was the best man in their wedding, and um, uh, we were good friends for lots of years. Mm -hmm. So that we still enjoy her kids. <laughs> I hope I haven't bored you too much. Yeah. Talk about an old lady. <laughs> it, there, there's um, a newspaper clipping that I have for you about that. And she was absolutely thrilled because she said, because it ran in newspapers all across the country. I mean, I, I think at that time that was so unusual that a woman should get the Man of the Year Award, that it was picked up by newspapers all over. 
So since she knew people all over the country through the League of Women Voters and through Wellesley College, uh, she was getting letters of congratulations from all over the country and she was just thrilled to death about the whole thing. And as I say, huge big stories in papers like Milwaukee and St. Paul. And, and those I've, I've given you for scanning, too. Yeah, I, I've talked a lot here. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, just to finish this up, I guess, what would you say that every, or, yeah, everybody needs to know about her? Um, she was a pioneer in the community as far as as education of, of citizens and encouraging them to take part in government and in volunteer work. Those are the important leadership things that she did. This podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.